Okay, so I want to start with the ingredients. Uh, we have our tomatoes here. So we have petite diced tomatoes, um, eight ounces of tomato sauce, tomato paste, and some of the healthier stuff. We have some celery, some fresh oregano. I like olives. I know that's not standard. Not everyone does that, but I, I put black olives in it. We've got some kidney beans, uh, happen to be low sodium. We've got pinto beans. Um, these are chili pinto beans, so it just means it has some seasoning, but you can just stick with pinto beans or black beans or whatever beans of choice. I go with two varieties of bell pepper. I go with red and orange, a yellow onion here, some garlic. Um, it's the turkey I was talking about, so I do two pounds. And some optional stuff here or stuff you can add on at the end, which is really good. Some cheddar cheese, uh, sour cream. It goes really good with avocado. I'm going to be doing this in a Dutch oven. So I'm going to be doing it here in the Dutch oven. All right, let's get started. Okay, so in the meantime, I chopped up the onion, celery, bell peppers, garlic, and I have some fresh oregano there. So what you want to do is start with the onions and celery once you have them chopped. <clears throat> in a Dutch oven, you put some olive oil, and you want to bring it to a medium heat, and just add in the onions and celery. With the onions and celery, medium heat. You want to start with those, um, and after about five minutes, you're going to add in the bell peppers. And finally, after about another five minutes, you're going to add in um, the garlic. So you definitely always want to start with the onions. I, I do celery. Celery is not necessary, but I like to add it for a little bit of texture. Um, and on the side over here, this is an aside. I'm not going to do a video on this, but I'm making uh, cornbread to go along with this in a cast iron skillet. So I have that started at the same time. So. Once I get the onions going there, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, seasoning of the meat. And so, back over here, I have my two pounds of ground turkey. And earlier when I showed you all the ingredients, I neglected to show you all the spices I'm going to use. So I would say the main ingredients that you're definitely going to need are ground cumin and chili powder. The rest are optional. I, I tend to like to mix up the flavors, so I add some cayenne. I add some uh, crushed red pepper, paprika, and uh, chipotle powder, and finally some garlic powder. Um, some of you probably notice some of these in the middle here can be a little bit redundant, but I uh, I tend to use a little bit of everything. So I'm gonna. I don't tend to measure. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I've been cooking long enough where I just kind of eyeball it. But you definitely want to go heavier with the cumin. And the uh, chili powder. So that's really going to give you the flavor you want for uh, traditional chili. I mean, it also depends how how you like it, how uh, spicy you like it. So I'm going to finish up with the seasoning and I'll be right back uh, to show you the next step. Okay, so about five minutes has gone by, so I'm going to add in the bell peppers. Again, I like to use orange and red. I'm just going to mix those in, make sure they get some oil going on them, make sure they get down to the heat. Again, I do it at about a medium heat. So. Again, that was after about five minutes of the onions and celery. I added in the bell peppers. In a few more minutes, we're going to add in our um, oregano, fresh oregano and fresh garlic. So uh, the seasoning more or less is done. I, I just wanted to show you the last few seasonings I used. Um, this goes really fast. I just uh, missed some of it earlier. I did, did some garlic powder here. Chipotle. Um, the Chipotle, the ones I would say, depending on the hot you want it, you gotta be a little bit careful with this Chipotle and cayenne. I already put quite a bit of cayenne. I do like it hot. So these two definitely use at your discretion. They're optional. It's just uh, a matter of how much of a kick you really want to have. Just uh, a little bit of paprika. Oop, a little bit more than I wanted. <laughs> All right. So just making sure our meat just mixing it in there, get the seasoning in. Okay, so these are definitely heavily seasoned. I um, Again, I tend to eyeball things. I do like it hotter. You don't have to go as heavy in the season as I did, but that's the way I like it. Okay, it's been about another five minutes. So the last step on the fresh ingredients, I got my fresh oregano. 
and I have my garlic. All right, I'm gonna mix those in and just give it a, at this point we just need a few more minutes. So we just, but we really wanna mix in that garlic, the oregano, get some more flavor in there. At this point, the onions or peppers are really cooked up well, the flavor going in there. Um, yes, yeah, so you wanna set that, set that, leave it on the medium heat or so for about, I don't know, five minutes at, at most, just a few minutes. Um, and then the next step is we're going to add our meat. Okay, so it's been about five minutes now and just added in the meat. Um, so again, after the oregano and the garlic going together, give it a few minutes and then we're going to add in the seasoned ground meat. And we're going to leave it again about medium high, uh, excuse me, medium and uh, just let it sit for a few minutes. We're gonna mix it in and we're gonna brown the meat. And once that's um, been browned a bit, we're gonna add in some of the other things like the uh, sauce and beans. Okay, now that it's been about 10 minutes and the meat has been browned, we're gonna start doing some of the tomato-based products. So we got the diced tomatoes. I'm gonna add that in right with the juice. Get our tomato sauce. Small can, I only do eight ounces. A small amount of, I'm gonna, big spoonful here though, of the tomato paste to mix in. And start mixing that a little bit. Not pretty right now, but I'm I promise you by the end it'll look a little bit nicer. Um, and I'm, again, I'm doing I'm doing this in a three and a half quart uh, Dutch oven. You probably want a Dutch oven definitely at, le uh, at least this size, if not a little bit bigger, because um, I'm I'm adding a lot of ingredients here. So I uh, do not I personally do not have a larger one, but um, if you do have a larger one, it wouldn't hurt to have that if you're using two pounds of meat and all these ingredients. Okay, this next step with the tomato-based uh, products, it can be a little bit acidic. So I add um, a small amount of uh, sugar just to kind of balance out the acidity. This is completely optional, um, but I just add that in and mix that in. All right, and we're going to let that uh, sit there for uh, a few minutes just to kind of mix in, um, get some of that tomato flavor in it now. And then the next step is going to be the uh, beans in a few minutes, so I'll show you that. Okay, we're at our final step, which is adding beans. Uh, I feel like you definitely need kidney beans to have a, a good chili. So I I would not make chili without kidney beans. But again, you can use whatever type of beans you want. Um, I always use kidney beans. And I like to have a couple of different varieties. And I'm also going to use some pinto beans. And again, these were um, pre-seasoned. So they're chili pinto beans. And that was just happenstance. I wanted, uh, you know, traditional pinto beans. But it just so happened the store I went to didn't have them or they were sold out. So I just picked up the chili ones because I knew I was going to be making uh, chili. <laughs> and we're pretty much done at this point. We're just going to mix it in and let it sit for a bit. So all those flavors mixing together. And this last step, which I barely have room for, and it's just a personal taste of mine, is I like olives in mine. I, I know this isn't standard or traditional, but uh, I'm just going to add some black olives in. I um, drained the fluid. And I should say with the beans, I also drained the fluid out, or most of it. So... Um, Pretty much the only fluid you're going to have is tomato-based if you do it this way. Um, I leave the, the tomato, um, the fluid in the diced tomatoes and obviously the sauce and the paste, but the beans I try to drain it out as well as the olives. All right, so I'll check back in with you in a little bit. Um, I usually let it mix in for about 20-30 minutes uh, to get all the flavors together and then uh, you'll have your finished chili. Okay, so finally done with the chili and made some cornbread with it in a cast iron skillet. Uh, that one in the oven. Um, I haven't made a video on it yet and hopefully someday I'll follow up and show you how to make that. And I added a bit of uh, cheddar cheese to, on top of it. So uh, you can mix it in the, the pot itself, but I, I do it separate. Um, yeah, it came out good. Um, hope you guys like it and please let me know what you think. Thanks.